Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of The Beautiful Game. Edge, what are you saying my guy? I'm good bro, um, we've got a special guest today, slightly different, um, you know a lot of people have been messaging us, inboxing us and saying that we want to hear from the youngsters, people making their way in the game and I'm happy to say we've delivered on that front. No, definitely, I'm excited for this one, I need to bring the heat because these youngsters, they're ready to take our place so <laughs> well, we're delighted to announce that we're joined with Brooke Norton Cuffey, how are you today bro? I'm fine, I'm good. You guys? We're good. Yeah, we're good, bro. Love we're for good, coming good. on and taking the time out. Obviously, no I know you're on holiday now, so, <laughs> you know, spending an hour with us, like, we're not going to take it for granted, so love for that. No worries, bro. Yeah, so t- you know what? Take us back to the beginning. Let's just, how did you fall in love with the game? Um, my brothers, all my brothers are sporty. Um, before I could walk, I used to go and watch my brothers play Sunday league football. Mm. Was he trying to run onto the pitch? <laughs> this was before I caught this. <laughs> this, this when I was in my mum's arms and that. So, yeah, I used to watch my brothers play football when I grew up. Um, my dad used to take us to the park and stuff like that. I used to go have a kick about when I was old enough to play football and just watching my brothers play football, really. That's what made me fall in love with the game. So, like, what's your earliest sort of football memories of, like, watching the game or players that you started to, like, look up to and think, you know what? I want to kind of emulate this player. Um, when I was younger, I didn't watch football, to be honest with you. I just used to play football. Like, I didn't really watch football. Um, you couldn't get me to sit in the house and watch football. I would be like, nah, I'm going outside to play. But, well, you're too energetic. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, My brother would be there watching games. My brother, like, he watches football all the time. He'd be like, come sit down. It's good that you watch football. And I'd be like, but isn't it better? I go out and play. So I go outside and play football. But um, earliest memories... Um, my brother supported Man United and like, the whole house kind of supported Man United. So growing up, watching Man United, sitting next to my brother sometimes, that's probably the earliest memories I remember, like watching football. So which players were about those days? Like who were the um, players leading the way? When I was watching uh, Rooney. Oh, yeah. Like, Rooney was the main man at the time I was watching. I was probably like six. Yeah, Rooney was the main man I was watching. I was probably like five, six. Rooney was just ripping the Premier League, so... Cool, and like, when did you know that you had something about you? Because everyone knows that, look, okay, I'm playing as a as a kickabout, as a laugh, but you clock like, hold on, I've actually got something here. I'm actually doing my thing kind of thing. Um, I didn't realise, to be honest with you, until like, first year scholar, you know. Wow, that's kind of late. Yeah, like, people used well, to tell... That's 14, 15, right? No, first year scholar is like 16. Yeah. So, like, I didn't realise until, like, first year school, like, before I knew I was good and that, but, like, I didn't realise, like, I'm taking this football thing, like, like, I'm actually good at this, like, I'm doing very well at this, like, until first year school, I didn't think, like, I stopped to realise it, like, before I was just playing football, having fun, and, like, first year school, when I was, um, when I started playing 23s when I was uh, first year, that's when I was, like, yeah, I'm actually doing well. But surely, like, the mandem on ends... Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah, must yeah. have been saying pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're balling yeah, out kind yeah. of thing. No, um, where I grew up, like, pitch would open at, like, 12, close at 8. So, 12 to 8. 12 to, like, 4 was the younger session, and then 4 to 8 was, like, the oldest. So, like, the oldest didn't want, really want the, young, the youngsters playing, and I ended up, but I used to just stand on the side and just wait to jump in, and then a couple of times I jumped in and that. Just ripped it up and then yeah. Yeah. just playing with the olders all the time. And <laughs> yeah, like the olders used to be like, oh yeah, you're actually hard still. Yeah. So that must have given you like mad confidence. So like in Arsenal, when was the moment where you started to like make a name for yourself? Because obviously you were speaking about playing with the under 23s and you're what, 18 years of age. So obviously they must have realised that, you know what, this is a boy that can be pushed more than these pairs. Um, I think under 15, under 16 season, um, I made the transition to right back. Then, like, I kind of took off. I think I was um, under nines, under tens. I was like at the top, like nines, tens, elevens. But that's when I was a striker. But then, when I made the transition to right back, I think I got my England call up. Then, once I got my England call up, like, things just started getting a lot better from there. So, so what caused you to make a transition? Because we speak to loads of players, like, yeah. they start off as a striker, yeah. then eventually they just find themselves <laughs> moving back. So, um, I was a striker um, from 
time I started playing football, really. Yeah. My older brother always told me I was going to be a fullback, but I just tried. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I started playing football. Um, my coach sat me down one day. I think this was like under 14 season. And before that, the season before that, I was just putting up dumb stats like yeah. 100 goals a season. Wow. 15 goals yeah. a game, stuff like that. And it, yeah. like dumb stats. And then one season. How old was you when you were doing that? Um, under 12 season, under 11 season, under 10 season. And on the 13th season, we won, my team won everything. It was three of us, me, Malcolm Abuye and Ken Edwards. Us three up top, just <laughs> ripped up everything. He just, <laughs> Keon Edwards, he just signed his first professional yeah, contract. Yeah, he just signed his thing. And Malcolm's yeah. at Derby, he's playing championship. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's yeah, been yeah, linked yeah, to like, oh, loads of clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my good boy, like. Yeah. Okay. Like that, so, it was us three up top, and we just set the league, like, just ripped up <laughs> everything, like. So there's one of them Please. ones that before you come on, it's like, well, yeah. how many goals you get in? Like, yeah, that literally, sort of like, <laughs> um, me and Keon used to have competitions. Like, I remember when I first signed to Arsenal, this was like under 10th, I think I scored six goals. This was when I was on trial. I scored six goals, he scored seven. Then me and him come back in the changing room. This when I was on trial, because I knew him from Chelsea days. So mm. I was on trial, I was like, oh, I'm going to score more goals in the next week. He's like, cool, we'll see. So these times, when you're under 10th, you don't all play on the same team. You have two. You have two different teams. So, I've heard Kayon scored um, like he's on like six goals. I'm on like five. Then end of the day comes now. I, f- I think I ended up on fifteen goals against Aston Villa. Then that's the time I got signed. He ended up on ten. So like, it's always a little competition thing between us. But yeah. So what? Why Arsenal? Is, by the way, is that the first team that had a look at you or? No, nah, um, I was at Chelsea from. Uh, sixes to under nines um, at Chelsea I think um, I got a bit complacent um, like I was I was good but I wasn't doing all the things I should have been doing um, then I think I was always ahead of my age group until like under nines under nines I started to slack off a bit um, but like I didn't like the way it was at Chelsea for me like those games I'll be sub I'll be brought on I'll score three goals take me off so like then had a conversation with the coaches um a couple of weeks later i got my release paper so mm. at chelsea so uh, did you ask to be released or did the club sort of say you um, know what it's not working for both parties or um this is when we first started out my dad was a bit more vocal than he is now <laughs> yeah um, obviously he's coming from sunday league he thinks yeah. he's gonna come and talk but yeah um no nah, it just didn't work out in it so yeah. Had a conversation, got my release papers. Um, they came in the mail, actually. I found out before I was going to school and um, my mum told me before I was going to school, she's like, what do you think of this? I was like, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. We'll go and try other clubs. So I went on trial, Tottenham, uh, Arsenal, of course. Um, I think I went on trial with Liverpool. Like, I went all over the place, like loads of clubs. And then um, obviously I signed for Arsenal. And what made you choose Arsenal? Is it like the conveyor belt of young players? Like when you see people in the first team, like Bakayo or Enketia or um, Emil Smith Rowe, was that a, was was there a particular reason as to why you chose Arsenal? I just like the training, to be honest with you. Like um, when I went there, um, the training was um, a lot of technical work, and I think that's the side of my game that I really needed to work on a bit more. Um, I think it was a lot more structured. Then it was at Chelsea at a young age, so I went there and enjoyed it. Um, I got along with the players and I said, yeah, I might as well join. So was it one of those ones where like clubs are like queuing up to sign you? Like, Did you have the trials within like, a close proximity um, and you had like a decision to make between like Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea or how it did like, it drop? Um, it was like loads of clubs came in for me and I just didn't end up going to all the trials. I just... Um, like clubs came in. I went on trial at Tottenham. I remember that trial. I went on trial at Tottenham, and I just ended up choosing Arsenal. Like I just liked the way Arsenal was. I liked the environment. I liked the coaches. I liked the players. So I, d- I kind of brushed off all the other clubs. Um, my dad was like, "Oh, I tried this club. Tried this club." I was like, "I, I like Arsenal. I'm gonna stay where I am." So yeah. Yeah. So um, Arsenal are known for or renowned for their Hayland Academy setup. As Dot mentioned, there's so many youngsters that are coming through the system. So what is it about that sort of setup 
that provides like a platform for youngsters to like showcase their talent? Um, you do train quite a lot. Um, and the training is intense. And um, like the way Arsenal structure it, um, of course you have team training, but at a younger age especially, you have your IDAs, which is your individual development areas that you work on and that you need to get better on. And at the end of the season, you'll come and like, you'll see if you ticked it off. If not, you go again next season or halfway through the season. Like, you have stop points where you're trying to get better and trying to get better and trying to get better. And it's not just from a footballing side, it's from a mental side, a technical side. It's like they take everything that's incorporated into football and they actually show it to you and teach it to you. So I think, that's the way he learned to produce so many good players. And like, how close would you say is the first team with the academy? Because we're seeing all across the country, like, you know, the first team working in tandem with the academy to get that sort of like conveyor belt of young yeah. players coming through. So at Arsenal, how is the system? Um, I don't think it's too far off. Um, I think the style of football you play, um, the way you play and the mentality, um, I think the same right down from first team through the academy. Arsenal's um, known for playing passing football, fluid football, um, and from you get taught that from young, from under tens, from the time I got there. At, at Chelsea, it was a bit more when you were younger, a bit more individual, and at Arsenal, got there passing drills, passing patterns, like it's a lot more. Um, how can I put it? It's a lot more um, structured. And um, the way you play is built into you from the time you're um, a kid all the way until you get into the first team. Yeah, because we spoke to um, Per Mertesack on the podcast yeah. and he's like a main figure in terms of like the academy yeah. set up. And what interested me is he was talking about succession plans. So mm -hmm. let's say up top you have like a Bamiyang, mm -hmm. you have Eddie, you have Falar and Belogan. Mm -hmm. So in terms of right back, I'm sure they've probably got a similar setup in terms of obviously having Tommy Yesu mm -hmm. and your name will probably be within that pyramid. So yeah. are you aware of like the club's plans for you long term? Um, sort of. It's like you're not going to get told, oh, you're going to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you know, or you have a feeling that mm. if I do this, I'm going to progress. So it's like I went out alone very early. So it was like I'm going to get professional games in men's football. So it's like that's something tipped off. So then it's you get to the next step and you get to the next step and each step you keep going, you get closer to achieving the goal and that's been in the first team really. So like, talk to us about your personal game because I speak to a lot of people in football mm. and I was like, yeah, we're going to be interviewing Brock. And like, oh my days, baller. Like, he's going to be the next, you know, superstar right back. Not to put pressure <laughs> on you, but that, yeah. that's what <laughs> contacts are telling me within the game. Yeah. So what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um... Strengths, um, 1v1s, um, that's attacking and defending, I'll say. Um, I like to defend, so 1v1 defending, I take those very personally. Uh, it's, like it, so it's like, you don't want to be getting, yeah, don't yeah. Want to be getting beat, you don't yeah, want to be getting yeah, wrecked, so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I take those personally. So, um, and going forward, I like to have the ball at my feet, I like to get at players, um, I like to be creative, I like to combine, I like to link up with people, and I like getting stats, so. Like what, like what is it about you man because when you were coming to the studio I was like raw you're a unit fam like bro you're only 19 and you're mm. looking like a monster already like so what are they giving you at Arsenal bro um, <laughs> I'm 18 actually 18 yeah, um, <laughs> uh, to be fair Arsenal is very good with their gym programme it's like from young I remember from under I think under 12s under 11s it's like they had us in the gym, but like you weren't doing heavy weights, but they're teaching you the movements. Yeah. Like we used to do, um, learn how to do squats and stuff like um, cleans and stuff like that mm. with um, a wooden pole. That's what you start off with. And then it's like you progress to like a 7.5 kg bar. And like, so at the same time, you're building your strength, but you're making sure you're flexible and your body yeah. can get into the right position. So like their physical program from young is very, very good. Like I think that helped me a lot. And, also myself, um, as I told you, I got brothers. So <laughs> yeah, up, I have like, to make sure. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Like, do your own. Yeah, so, <laughs> so and um, my brothers um, are quite physical as well. Like my older, my the brother just above me plays basketball, um, and the one just above me used to play football. And 
the oldest one used to, uh, does like mixed martial arts stuff like that so like we always used to just do things gym stuff like that and when I was younger as punishments and that my dad used to make me do <laughs> sits so 30 yeah. seconds a minute your legs oh, will be yeah, burning so, <laughs> yeah. so yeah but no physically I used to play loads of sports as well I used to play basketball swimming trampoline used to do everything so that's where it comes from yeah when you spoke about your game you mentioned all the statistics or all the characteristics should I say yeah. in terms of the modern day fullback mm -hmm. goals and assists mm -hmm. you mentioned winning your duels mm -hmm. so like in the modern game which sort of fullbacks are you looking at and thinking mm, this is sort of like a similar look to how I want to get my game to, to be when I fully mature um, I don't think there's any one player that I say I play exactly like him but I think I take aspects from Quite a lot of players like Reese James, um, physically he kind of reminds me because he's yeah. a beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, ov obviously, he gets his stats, he gets goals, he gets assists. Um, the way he crosses the ball, the way he strikes a ball, um, as an all-round right back, he's just top. Obviously, Trent. Um, the, when you look at Trent, like, technically as a right back, he's just different. He's mm -hmm. different level. The way. He crosses, the way he clips a ball. Um, and then defensively, defensively, sometimes I look at players and I think everyone, as a fullback nowadays, I think sometimes the defensive side is a bit neglected. Um, so, you know what, sorry to interject, from your perspective, yeah. is it attack first or is it I need to do my job defensively first mm -hmm. and then attack? Um Defensively first, I would say, because especially when I went out on loan, you see it's defensive first. Because end of the day, if you keep a clean sheet, you're not gonna lose. So you're gonna at least get a point. But um, it's going, interesting because like someone like a uh, Aaron Wan Bissaka, for example, yeah. he's a right back, and yeah. people sort of look at him and say, oh, he doesn't get the attacking yeah, yeah, yeah. stats of like a uh, Reese James or Trent. Mm. So like, in your mind, do you think? If I'm not delivering numbers, I'm not doing my job. Mm. Or do you think if we keep a clean sheet, I'm doing my job? <laughs> if you no, understand I what I'm think, saying? I think both, you know. Okay. I think it's like, especially when I was on loan, like if we won if we won the game and um say we kept a clean sheet and I didn't do enough going forward or I didn't create enough chances or I didn't get a goal assist, um, it will hurt me. Like I'll be fuming after the game. Yeah. Like, um, so I think it's both because you can't just do one side of the game nowadays, I think. Mm. You've got to do both. And it's very important as a fullback to do both. So, Talk to us about your time at Lincoln. You said that, you know, playing men's football is important to you. Why is it so important in terms of, you know, obviously you're still young, but why do you think you need to be in that environment of playing men's football? Um, um, you're playing for something. You're playing for a lot more. You're playing for three points and... Um, Unfortunately, we were in the relegation battle at one point, so we were playing for more than just three points. We we're playing f to stay up, mm. and I think I, I like playing in front of fans. So the fans really get behind you, and they push you, and the team environment. It's like you all have a set goal. It's win, win, win. When you're in the academy, of course you want to win games, but you think more about your development and your individual self trying to push in to get into the first team. But when you're on loan, you're actually in the first team, you're in the first team environment. And it's a culture of, we have to win games. We have to do this, we have to do that. So I just like being in that type of environment. And I think first team football, um, men's football was just so good for me. Like I learned loads. Yeah, because I watched that seven minute clip that was released, I think last week, yeah. where you were talking about your experience and they interviewed, I think the scientists, the fitness yeah, yeah, scientists yeah. at Lincoln, and they're just talking about your mentality, yeah. how you bedded yourself in. And I think in the lower leagues, there's almost a bit of like a of a snobbery towards youngsters coming from professional. Mm -hmm. like, oh, he's a fancy Dan or he yeah. thinks he's bigger than. <laughs> but with you, there was like, nah, he came in, he respected us. Yeah. He'd done as he was told. You immersed yourself in the culture of the club. Yeah. How important was that for you to do? Um, I think if I went in and just kept myself to myself and just played my game, then I don't think you would have... Because obviously, these are senior players. They've played their game, so you actually need to earn their respect. Like At the end of the day, you're a kid. You're coming into their environment. It's their club. So I think from day one, um, 
I just came in with the mindset of I'm coming in to work hard and get a right back spot and perform and go back to Arsenal a better player. So from day one training, like it was completely different. Intensity, the physicality. I remember I got smashed in like the first <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> like, was it, what was you thinking? Welcome back, to League back, One. Back to Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it was when I got there as well. It was cold as well, <laughs> <laughs> and at Arsenal, like you get given your thermals. You're like, mm, yeah, now we're the no, trenches. I'm <laughs> I, remember, I got there. He's giving me shorts, short socks, a t-shirt. I'd even get a long top. I've gone to him. Oh, that thermals. He said, "You're not Arsenal now, mate." <laughs> so, like from day one, it was just so mm. different, but. I think you can't just like I got smashed. I'm not just gonna sit there and just think oh, I'm getting smashed. I'm gonna relax. Da, da, da. It's like you have to work hard. You got to show that grit. So mm. I got smashed. I'm not just gonna say cool. A senior player smashed me. I'm gonna go and smash him back. So mm. it was like that from day one. It was just a battle. So every single day in training, I was just working hard. Sometimes things get heated in training, or things get heated in games and stuff like that. But you just gotta know how to deal with it and just stick up for yourself really and just show them that you're not gonna just come here and just turn the cheek and just get bullied and actually be a player and actually not just be a player, you're gonna go into the team and show what you can do. So that's what I've done. And how, how would you say that experience helped you mentally from a, from yeah a psychological standpoint? I think it helped me a lot. Um, mentally, I think before going there, I was good, but it did help me a lot. Obviously, um, I was by myself in Lincoln uh, no family, no friends. So. How, how was that? Because, you know, as football fans, we sit on our armchair and just watch watch matches. We don't understand what's going on in a footballer's head. Yeah. We see you get onto the pitch. If you perform, yeah, you're great. If you don't perform, oh, you're shit. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. So, like, in terms of being by yourself, away from family, how, how difficult was that? Um, I don't think... There wasn't many times I really like realized it. It was boring, of course, but there wasn't many times I realized, oh, I'm away from family. This is bad because I just came there with the mindset of I've got a job to do. There was sometimes it did hit you though. Mm. Like we finished training at, we start training about eight thirty. We finished about one, two. So you have the rest of the day. Mm. So there was times in your house just like this is ugh, this is lame, man. Like, mm. I just wanna, you know what I'm saying, but um. Just try to keep yourself occupied really my day. So what did you do like to keep yourself preoccupied? Um I got a David Lloyd's membership and just went gym really. Wow, no wonder you're looking like <laughs> <laughs> you're so, looking like Hulk. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I went David Lloyd's pretty much every single day after training and before I got into the squad for Lincoln, um I was doing extras by myself. So like I was going for runs around the town and I was doing hill sprints or going into my garden, skipping and stuff like that. And Obviously, I got a lot more time on my hands, so I could cook before, but I learned how to cook a bit better and um, just watch Netflix. Mm. It's, pretty much it. it's interesting because on my drive down, I found one of your teammates from Lincoln, yeah. TJ Ayoma, yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, we're interviewing Brooke yeah. today. I was like, yeah, tell me three things about him. Yeah. He's like, bro, that guy's a baller. <laughs> He's driven, he works hard, and he listens. And he was saying, initially, when you came into Lincoln, you weren't really starting, yeah. but you kept training hard. You mm. kept working hard. Then once you took your slot, you took your opportunity. Yeah. And I was like, so long term, what do you think about Brook? And he's like, yeah, he's got a shot. Mm. Obviously, he's got a big, big shot of playing for Arsenal. Obviously, you need that bit of luck. Because yeah. he was talking about his time at Tottenham, yeah, 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 et cetera. Yeah, yeah. When but he said that, yeah, this boy, your mm. mindset and your ability is what sets you apart. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about that, hearing that from your pairs that have, have played with you? Um... I think from the time I went there, me and TJ got on. I knew him from a couple of people from before, so like he did take me under his wing a little bit. But yeah, I think what you said is pretty much spot on. Like when I came there, I put my head down. I worked hard. My time when I wasn't playing, it was a bit difficult because I'm used to playing games. No one likes sitting on the bench, so yeah. there was times I was sitting on the bench. I'm thinking I'm not because I did come on every game. I sat on the bench, but it's like you want to be starting games. You want to be playing the whole 90 minutes and you're not starting, you've got to do runs after the game and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you really want to be doing, but I think you just got to keep your head down and just keep cracking on, really. So what's what's next for, for Brooke next season? 
We've got to talk about the goal. Oh, Sheffield sorry, Wednesday sorry, sorry, can't, sorry, it can't sorry, be it can't be sorry, 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 sorry. talk sorry. to us about your goal um, <laughs> nah uh, it was a brilliant moment like yeah yeah, yeah. Um, to be fair the goal was coming for a couple of games before you've got that you've got yeah. that pinned yeah. on, your, on your Twitter you're not <laughs> playing <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, nah, I think the goal was coming like I had a I went on a couple crazy runs before those nearly ended up in goals um, the game before that I think Took the ball from my own half and dribbled to theirs and hit it with my left. I thought it went in, but like missed by like a couple of inches. Mm. So everyone just kept telling me, "Keep going, the goal's coming, the goal's coming." And even my boy Malcolm, I told him the day before, literally, I got a score tomorrow. So like yeah. the goal, like it's been coming. I got a score tomorrow. So when it happened, it was just like it was so real. Um, my parents were in the stands. Oh. Um, had family at that game, so yeah, it was like so real. The fans. Fans went crazy. It was against Shuffle Wednesday. Well, that's a big club. So yeah, they got to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, it's a big club. So, and I think it's like a little rivalry as well. So, yeah, it was a great moment. So, just one one more on that. Like, when you say you felt that it was coming, mm. like, what do you mean by that? Because, for example, I'm a Liverpool supporter, mm. and obviously we got my man in the background. That's a Liverpool <laughs> supporter, so he will relate with this. But. For example, Joe Gomez. Yeah. yeah, he's never scored a goal for Liverpool. Brilliant player, mm-hmm. fantastic defender, but I never feel like the goal's coming mm-hmm. with him, right? Mm-hmm. So when you say the goal's coming, mm-hmm. why and how? Um, I think my first start, I picked the ball up in my own half and I dribbled all the way into the box and like, I megs the last man and the mm-hmm. keeper just came out, <laughs> and like even I, I've watched the video back a couple times and you even see the players go. They're starting to celebrate yeah, yeah, before yeah. I score. And what, every time you watch it back, you think it's, it's actually like, going to go yeah, in. Where it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> but then um, there's been a couple, like, mm. a couple shots, a couple missed runs. Like, it was just so close that it's like, it has to happen sooner or later. <laughs> so that's why I just feel like it's coming because when it's so close and it keeps getting closer and closer and closer, but um, it's going to eventually go in. Mm. So. Yeah, so your experience at Lincoln, as we said, went positive. Mm-hmm. Like, you played under 23s football. Yeah. So now, would you say your first team player that maybe under 23s, mm-hmm. not that it's beneath you, but yeah. you want to continue this trajectory of playing in front of fans, mm-hmm. playing in meaningful games? No, 100%. I feel like I want to play professional football. Um, I want to play in front of fans. I want to showcase my talent. Um, and I want to... Um, be in a first team environment where I'm playing week in, week out. Even if I'm not playing week in, week out, make sure I'm trying to get there to play week in, week out and actually striving to win things or get the three points. And I just want to play men's football in a decent standard of football. So play men's football at a high level. That's all I want to do for next season, really. Because when you look at Arsenal qualifying for Europa League, that's going to add more of a workload to the team. And obviously at right back right now, you've got Tommy Esu, mm-hmm. you've got Cedric. Mm-hmm. As Dot was mentioning earlier, we're in the group chat. Yeah. And a lot of people say, oh, we've got some youngster coming through. Like mm-hmm. maybe you can get some opportunities. Is that something you've thought about? Um, I haven't thought about it too much. It's, of course, it crosses your mind here and there. Because um, there's two right backs, there's two first team right backs, Cedric and Tommy Esu. Unfortunately, they both had injuries so when people have injuries you get your chance but um I was on loan um yeah it's something to think about here and there but to be honest with you um at this current moment in time until I get back to Arsenal I have hopefully I got Euros I have Euros coming up for England so yeah but think about that and then when I go pre-season if I go pre-season with the first team go there and impress and then if you impress then hopefully I get my chance but so anyway. Another thing I forgot to ask is when you're out on loan, mm-hmm. how um, connected is someone like Mikel Arteta to your oh. development? Do they send you clips? Do they communicate and say, oh, well done, you're doing well or stuff like that? It's a bit different for me because um, I went as an under-23 player. I, f- I don't know if you, what happens if you go as a first-team player, but for me, I was more in contact with the um, 23 staff. So per uh, message me, Quite a few times, I had um, 23 staff. Like, we have someone who's in charge of the loans there, who kept in contact with me. Um, my head coach kept in contact with me quite a bit, and just other staff, the sports scientist, 
was on me all the time and was contacting Lincoln, make sure he does his gym this day, make sure he does his gym that day. So they were pretty hands on with me, to be fair. And you mentioned that you've got the Euros coming up. Like, how how much are you looking forward to that? Because that's an opportunity for you to pit your wits on an international stage. Yeah. Um, if I go to Euros, this would be very good for me. Um, I played um, three. Yeah, I played three out of the three games for the qualifiers with the under 19s. That was my first time playing with under 19s. That's a year up because I'm under 18. Yeah. Um, and if I go Euros, I just want to go there and win it, really. It would be great to have an um, international trophy under your belt and to win something for your country as well. So. Yeah, so like, talk to us about your interests outside of football. I know we spoke about football, mm-hmm. obviously Arsenal, Lincoln. So outside of the game, what do you get up to? I know you mentioned a bit of it at Lincoln, you're watching yeah, yeah, Netflix yeah. and you like the gym, but outside of that, what, what do you get up to? Um, I don't do much really, to be honest with you. Like, as a footballer, I think there's not much you can do. Like, I like, me personally, I'm an active person. I like doing loads of things. Mm. I'm a sporty person, but during the season, you can't do much of that because if you're playing games, if you're playing two games a week, it's gonna just fatigue your body. You're not mm. gonna be able to train properly every day. So pretty much chill. Like when I was at Lincoln, just chilling, Netflix, games sometimes, talk to my boys, that's about it. Mm, yeah. Saw you enjoying your holiday and your, your jet ski, yeah. flexing their muscles. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how do you deal with the, the fame? Because obviously, like, people will start to notice, especially mm. Arsenal fans for now, will be like, oh, that's Brooke. Mm. How, how do you deal with that? Um, to be fair, I didn't really get it as much. Like, my dad gets it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, my dad, um, my dad works on construction. My dad's a builder, so like, there was once he went into Screw Fix. He's come home, Broke. the man at Screw Fix said he's been watching you. Says you're gonna be the next best thing. Like my mum and dad follow it, like the fame side a bit more than me. Okay. Um, like obviously they're your parents. They're proud. So they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they want to say it to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's my son. That's my yeah. son. <laughs> but, um, I didn't get it too much until I went to Lincoln because Lincoln's such a small town. It's like okay. everyone in the town knows you. So like, I think I went there, I think it was the first week I went there and I got a free Starbucks because the lady said, oh, you're the new signing, right? Oh yeah, you're going to play well. Da, da, da. Here's a free Starbucks. Like everyone in town, you're walking. I go David Lloyd's. I'm coming out of the sauna. Oh, Brooke, can I stop and have a chat? Da, 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 da. It's like, I'll be in the sauna. I'll be there with my teammate. Next thing you know, there's 10 people in the sauna wow. just there trying to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Or like, I'm That's leaving. Mad. Or like, I'm leaving and there's people waiting outside so they can take pictures with you. Serious? Wow. So yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot. So I think I didn't really see the fame side until I went to Lincoln because Lincoln, their fan base is quite big. And like, their fans, because it's such a small town, they all know who you are. And especially because I was playing quite well, they were just like, they just wanted to know me, they wanted to speak to me. But to be fair, I love it. I, I, I loved it. Like, I think when I was injured, um, um, I sat down on the um, bench before the game and primary school kids were coming over, talking to me, take pictures. I had to walk around. I had to go into the um, pub and do a little interview, a little speech, speak to the fans. But no, I didn't really, answering the question, I didn't really realise until I went to Lincoln. As a youngster, as someone being 18, social media is very prominent. Like, this is the social media age. Mm-hmm. How important for you is it to, like, maybe, obviously not read too much of the press because when it's high, it's high. When yeah. it's low, it's low. So it's like, you know, people love to build players up. Mm-hmm. Then when they make a mistake, they can tear them down. So how are you with social media? Um, I'm, I'm aware of my social media. Like, I'm pretty much aware of what's going on and what people are saying. I have a group chat um, with my family. When there's, new articles, when there's news articles, stuff, my mum will send it in. First yeah. I send it in. So I, I, I do know what goes on, but um, the upside, obviously, it's nice to hear what people are saying about you, but it's like you can't read too much into it because at the end of the day, their fans, of course, they have their say, but it's not like their opinion is not going to change what you're doing. Mm. So, and the downsides, because obviously there's going to be times where you, you do have a, maybe a bad game or you do do something wrong that maybe the fans or the media won't like, but I don't think you can look too much into it. 
But at the same time, you do have to be smart and responsible about what you do on social media because you can get crucified on that. No, well said, well said. And in terms of like fashion, are you into fashion or um, just keep it tracky <laughs> thing? Or I'm it, I'm chill to be fair. Yes. Like, most days trackies, <laughs> like catch me in the centrals. Most days really just trackies. Um, I don't really go out. When I go out to eat, you might see me dress up in little jeans, t-shirt. Okay, let's say you're going on a date now. What's yeah. what's the drip? What's Wh- the drip? White tea. Nah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I got my missus, so when I go out, my missus is like, I do dress up a bit. Like, Jeez. Um, depends where we're going though, because some place you have to go dress a bit fancy. Cool. Let's mm. say you're doing Mayfair. We're not gonna name any. <laughs> we're not gonna name any restaurants, but let's say you're going Mayfair date night. Right, cool. So like, <laughs> probably Cargos, Dior's. Come on. Um, probably Palm Angels tea or something, and then. A little bag or something. Like, calm. Like, like, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. So yeah, man, this has been an enjoyable chat, man. You seem very level headed, very grounded, and I think those are the traits that you need, especially in a world where, you know, being a footballer is like a bubble. Yeah. Like you understand and you seem like someone that's not gonna get intoxicated in it. Mm-hmm. You just wanna do your thing, work hard and yeah, you'll you'll prosper. And I think last one from me in terms of um, this interview before we round up. Music. What music are you into? Because I speak to all these youngers and you, man, are just saying little this, little mm. that. And I'm like, bro. Little baby. I, I, yeah, I don't, up, know, yeah. I don't know these guys. So yeah. who, who, who are you rocking with? Um, I'm drive, I drive a lot in it. So yeah. i got to change it up a little bit. Um, Probably put a paper. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, Dirk, baby. Everyone, that's that's, that's everyone's in it. But sometimes you gotta switch up. Like, there's times you catch me listen to like a Bruno Mars or something. Come on. Um, who else do I listen to? Maybe some Afro beats in there. Who you messing with from the Afro beats? A burner boy thing. Yeah, it's a burner boy. Come on. So our burner boy, Wizkid and Davido, you always hear these debates in the group (laughs) chat. So you rocking with? It's a burner boy. Burner boy. Burner boy thing. Burner boy thing. Yeah, that's probably people listen to the most, really. Yeah, this has been an excellent yeah. chat, man. You're an impressive young player, man. I love your mindset. And we're definitely going to keep watching your journey because uh, I think you can go very, very far. Nice. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for, for being transparent and taking the time out. And I think you gave a fantastic interview. So all the best for the future. And we're going to be supporting your journey. So we're going to leave it there. That's another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. If you like the video, please leave a like on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Beautiful Game Podcast. Follow our social handles at podcast underscore TBG on Twitter and at pod underscore TBG on Instagram. And we will see you in the next one. Peace.